The breaking story is a guy that has been arrested and accused and supposedly confessed to being the one who delivered the package to the 15-year-old Messianic Jew and blew him up on Purim uh, 2008. The good news is they believe he acted alone. They're investigating possibly that he was financially helped by some organizations in the States, but overall he's an American immigrant to Israel, immigrated 2000, former Marine turned ultra-Orthodox Jew. It is true that this guy is completely responsible for his actions and you can never blame anybody else for saying something that set him over the edge. However, at the same time, there were ultra-Orthodox activists in REL where this family lived, and they were posting pictures and home addresses of these believers. So if this guy's walking around looking for someone, you could possibly argue that he got his information of where to commit the crime from these ultra-Orthodox activists who are haters of freedom of religion, who are haters of freedom of opinion, now the sad part is this guy was actually married and he had four small children and I really feel bad for the wife because I can't imagine having four small children and then finding out that your husband's a nutcase murderer and you now have to raise your kids and support yourself by yourself. And on the other hand, I feel bad for this guy because he actually feels responsible for maintaining the purity of the Jewish religion, race, thing. But he's a total hater of anything not like him. He's also accused of attacking homosexuals and the police who would protect them. And he is accused of killing a Palestinian shepherd and cab driver. Now, you have to understand, a shepherd Palestinian are the kind of people we want. We want less Palestinian terrorists and more Palestinian working normal people. So to kill... Palestinian shepherd and cab driver who's just working for a living is retarded. And speaking of retarded, the BBC just reported that Israel was withholding water from Palestinian areas. Okay, first of all, the entire country is in drought. They are charging enormous amounts of money to Israelis. We bathe our children once every few days because we can't afford to bathe them every day. And the Palestinians are claiming that Israel won't let them build wells. That's right. We just want all these poor Palestinian children to die of thirst. And the Palestinians claim that Israel will not let them build wells without permits. And so they don't have enough wells. When in actuality, there's like 82 or 86 permits to build wells and they've only built 26. The truth is that the Palestinian leadership in the people in charge are so lazy. They don't build wells, and so the Palestinians don't have water. And for all the money that's been sent to the Palestinians since they have received, per people group, more money than any other people group on the planet, if they spent the money on building water infrastructure and not on missiles, I think the people would benefit. And then on top of that, they claim that Israel came and took a water tanker, like a big container full of water, away from Palestinians who were in a closed military area. That's not a water issue. That's a you're not supposed to be here issue. It, Jews, if they went to that place, they would probably take their water tanker away as well. Part of the issue of the drought that we have, because most of the water that Israel uses comes from the Kinneret, is that in a peace treaty that we made with Jordan years ago, we promised them a certain amount of water regardless of whether we're in drought or not. So they are guaranteed a certain amount of water whether we have the water or not, and we get what's left over. That's right, we're generous. But the Jordanians, you know, maybe they deserve it because this past week, a tourist bus full of Israelis touring in Jordan flipped over, and I, I guess there was rain or something, and the Jordanian citizens came out and started helping to pull out the Israeli civilians, and I'm really proud of them. That is really a demonstration to show that the Jordanian people do not hate Israel as much as perhaps the Arab leadership. But since the Arab leadership is what is in control in Yemen, the Jewish population is now, I believe, officially zero. 
Supposedly, there are only a few hundred left, and persecution, especially since the beginning of the year, has really risen. And so I believe it was the U.S. State Department that stepped in along with Israel and said, we will go ahead and pull you out. You have your choice. Do you want to go to America or Israel? Half chose to go to America, half chose to get Israel. And we officially have taken in all the Jewish refugees, which makes me wonder, if Israel can take in all the Jewish refugees from around the world, can't the Arab countries take in their fellow Palestinians? Now, somebody asked me, and I haven't had a chance to answer, what about the one-state solution? What if Palestinians are all included in one big Israel? And in theory, that would be great. And actually, that is kind of what happened back in 1948. The Palestinian Arabs that chose to stay when Israel declared itself a Jewish state received citizenship. And that's really what an Israeli Arab is. And the ones that chose to flee are now somehow a different people group, so-called. But I would actually be for that on one condition, that Palestinians will be allowed to live in the Jewish state as citizens. And the first time that they say something like, let's destroy the Jewish people, push them in the sea and take and call it Palestine, then you lose your citizenship. Deal? And people have argued that the Palestinians are a different type of Arab or something, and they're not like the Coptic Arabs and all the Egyptians, and you have the Iraqis. And But Israel has taken in... Yemenite Jews and Russian Jews and American Jews and we can take in all the different types of Jews But the Arabs they just can't get along. They can't take in some Arab. That's slightly sort of different type of Arab So to solve this problem Hillary Clinton has come to Israel and I don't know It somehow feels like you know when you're on a PC and you click something and it crashes and so you start up your computer and then you do the very same thing to see if it'll happen again. It's like, okay, let's have talks. Okay, um, we won't have Palestine without Jerusalem. And then Israel says, well, we won't have peace talks without Jerusalem. And you're like, okay, let's try this again. Let's hit the reset button. Okay, we will not agree to Palestine without right of return. Okay, and then Israel's like, we will not freeze the settlements in the West Bank. And you're like, okay, impasse, reset, let's, and, and it's like they have the same conversation over and over again. <sighs> and finally, the Swedish reporter who reported that the IDF soldiers were stealing body parts from Palestinian prisoners has come to Israel to explain that he based his information on facts. And so when they asked him, well, did you actually meet any of these people that, you know, had a body part supposedly taken out of them? Well, no, but, um, but if you saw what I saw, you would have written the same thing. Oh, okay. So I don't know what he saw. I mean, cause it wasn't body parts and it wasn't the people who claimed to have lost the body parts. And it wasn't the doctors who supposedly took the body parts out. And it wasn't the money that the IDF supposedly got from the body parts. So he must have had a vision. Yes, that's it. That's the only thing I can think. He had a vision and he just saw it. 